Uh, it's your boy Demir here. Hope that's coming through nice. It sounds nice Perfect. and loud on my end. That's good here. So you got your man here, Demir, Wasteman Wano, in the house sucking down some vape and nicotine. As I speak, you have joined us on the Industry Noise podcast, the INP, where we discuss everything and all things surrounding the underground electronic music industry. So, uh, what you're listening to in the background is a guest mix from my homie Josh Butler. He joined me on Purveyor Chronicles, hosted by Maximum Radio on Radio FG in Paris, France, uh, every second Saturday of the month at 9 p.m. France time, which is 3 p.m. Toronto time, New York time. It's a dope mix, man. If you're on my Patreon, you would have been able to download this yesterday. Day after it aired, so patreon.com forward slash Demir official. <laughs> <laughs> what was that again? Oh, patreon.com forward slash Demir official. <laughs> Get in it. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, so lots of exciting things. Speaking of Patreon and all of that, so uh, June 16th, well, you know what? This is gonna happen after that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, probably. So it's okay. Let me let me let me uh, reposition here for context. Um, if you are listening to this, it's quite possible that you missed an opportunity to join our Inspiration Speaks event with Carlo Leo, where we talk about, you know, the things that have inspired him to get him to where he is in the game. And Carlo is our guest because he's obviously an inspiration for me artistically. So if you missed that, you suck. You're a waste. free. With the patreon.com forward slash Jameer official membership. All access and higher tier. But, you know, we're going to have another guest next month. We'll announce that later. So, anyway, um, yeah, we should. Josh Butler in the back, running it. Yes, UK lad. Mad touring, lad, eh? are, touring currently in New Zealand and Australia. Oh, shit. It's nice, man. You sent me some pictures that look great. All right, so one we were discussing uh, an important topic of what your criteria would be. Well, actually, I shouldn't say would be. What is the criteria you use as a as a person who regularly orders women's used underwear vacuum I, sealed? I don't do that off of the uh, the dark web. What do you? <laughs> I don't do that. But if what I were, are you, what what is your criteria? I, I I'm really curious. I don't know. I prefer no tuna. No tuna. That's nice. That's when the pH levels are awry. <laughs> <laughs> very high pH. Usually levels. you want to avoid like, that. You know, you don't want very high pH levels. It's not good for you. You know. You know, I've I've used that language with uh, women before, and they actually appreciate it. Okay, you know, you just. You're just being oh, accurate and sensitive. Oh, have you have you checked your pH level, sweetheart? I think you may uh, you know you don't have enough acid in your body, you know. <laughs> you know, we, you probably it's probably all the asparagus and espresso. Oh my god, avocado toast. Avocado toast. Yo, hold on, before anything, ass. you know, we gotta give a shout out to uh, Mister Worldwide, aka Mister Chad Hanks, for ending uh, racism. Uh, uh, yo, you were on. Yo, yeah, I was like, hey, let's let's pause there for a second. Let's pause there for a second. Yeah, I don't know. Who for those of you who are wondering about uh, who Chet Hanks is, this is the son of Tom Hanks, and he was. He didn't really take up that much discussion in our pod last week, but I gotta tell you, y'all, one after he, you must have did some research, and Bro. you're just on it for days bro you, the videos i was watching of this guy i was have you seen the one where he talked about trump no <laughs> he didn't want it and, and i know i know he's not a trump supporter and he goes no but he spoke to a trump supporter oh no, no, no he did one where he was just like uh, like chatting in his car right and mm. then he's like you know we got to give him a chance nah fam you know and then he says uh don't trump suck your mother <laughs> Yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, yo, see your racism quiet after this one, bro. No more racism. Yo, man. Yo, man. 
Chet, Chet Hanks has the has the pod one down. That was straight up violation. Oh, that one there was that, that was crazy. Me, Bro, that was crazy. yo, you know what the thing is, and I was talking to someone about this. The only people getting offended are the whitewashed black people. They're the people who aren't even part of like they don't even accept your heritage. The ones, yeah, you know what? They actually, I there's actually reaction videos from people from Jamaica, from Yad. Yeah. Uh, and most of the reaction videos on Chet Hanks has been, they just thought it was, this shit was funny. Yeah, they just like, they you embraced know, and, it, and they're know? like, you know, we share the culture. It's the people who aren't even in Jamaica yeah, that happen to be black and have some, maybe some distant sort of ties to Jamaica. Maybe they're West Indian from another island getting upset. Otherwise, his reaction was, was white, ironic. dude. And he goes, let's be real. The funny part about it is not that he's pretending to Jamaican to be Jamaican. It's the fact that he thinks he's a man from the islands. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. He's not even doing it. It's, it's pure appreciation. I saw one reaction video, and this guy was absolutely right. Uh, I forget. He's an artist, too. I wish I remember his name. Jamaican dude. Is it? Oh, fuck. I'm going to have to look it up. Uh, but while I do that, he basically said, "No, nah, man, he's just fucking a Jamaican girl, man." Yeah. Oh, did you That's not, exactly so, what he said? Did you not and see the clothing like, line? Yeah. Huh? He has a clothing line. So he had a clothing line for White Boy Summer, okay? <laughs> and hold on, let me pull it up. Made in China, <laughs> bro. So the shirts, they everything sold out quick. I uh, yeah, I bet. Like everything was insta sell out. Like I don't blame it. Like here you go, white boy summer dot shop. Uh, let me go ahead and share screen at least to the audience. Um, okay, hold up. I, I need to look up who that artist. So you know, so it says some of the shirts say stop hate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. White boy summer. Yeah, yeah. And black queen summer. Wow. So we know he loves he loves the Jamaican things, man. Oh, he does, he does, bro. You gotta put respect on that. You know, no disrespect. You know, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah. I can't find it. Uh, what's is this in here? No, no, that's not it. Uh, I can't remember it, but anyway, he basically said most Jamaicans are cool with it because they're they're happy to share culture. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, he's actually doing it proper. It's not like I've heard, I've heard really bad West Indian slash Jamaican accents coming from black American actors, like poor, like really Appalling bad, bad eh? attempts. Well, go on, man. Like what? Like yo, just don't even attempt it. Just leave it alone. Yeah, bro. You can't do it. But I then... think the only movie I've seen with authentic. Patwa stuff going down that was an American production, but I have a feeling there were real Jamaican actors who lived in Miami. Was uh, uh, Mark for Death with Steven Seagal? Oh, you never Steven seen Seagal. that movie? No, oh, but I do know who Steven Seagal is. What, what, <laughs> so, yo, let me give you this scenario. It's kind of funny. So, you know, the funny thing about Steven Seagal's movies are his hair never gets fucked up. Yeah, that's ever. correct. Like and it never gets it, the complexity of the fight sequences and no, the hair that they're perfect. Running, the sweat his hair is always perfectly slicked back. So he chases these guys in uh, in a jewelry store, <laughs> and and the, and the one guy's like, "Yo, what man? I too, we are one of this little white boy here. Let me come deal with him." <laughs> That's proper. Yeah, they got their asses proper. kicked, of course. But yeah. anyway, I always see that scene, and it's I, I find it fucking funny. Um, all right, let's 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 um, let's move on. Um, actually, um, like from a music perspective, this week, uh, because I think by the time we air this, yeah, it'll be Juneteenth. Juneteenth is a big fucking big deal for uh, underground big house. Big deal. Someone's been smoking. Uh, <laughs> almost sounded Guyanese there for a second. You know, yeah, Guyanese man. would say 
TV big as opposed to a big TV. Yeah. Like, you know, chicken curry. Bro. Curry chicken. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Juneteenth is coming, and the significance of Juneteenth is the, the date that uh, slaves were actually... Oh, wait. You know, oh, I pulled up the wrong article. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. My bad, my bad. I thought we were going into uh, the Junior I'll, I'll Wars. Uh, my bad. That, that... Liberated, entitled to um, uh, 40 acres and a mule, all of that jazz. Um, the southern states, a lot of the slave owners sat on that information and didn't tell the slaves for, uh, I think, over another year. So they celebrate this date as the day that yes this is uh, an initial step to our freedom we're no longer slaves blah 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 so um, I'm actually going to be releasing some music that date uh, I think anywhere between three and five tracks you know yeah just to mark mark the occasion black music freedom doing it independent all of that shit I'm just loving it man um, so anyway, that's coming, uh, and, and Bandcamp is doing a deal there where they're donating a portion of the proceeds to the NAACP, which is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a nice money move, you know what I mean? I would hit applause, but man, I've been hitting the button quite a bit to this pod, so I'm just gonna... Fair point, fair point. Two, tools, two claps here, and say, yo, that's a good move. Band camp. Good move, yeah, you know, they gotta represent. Yeah, I mean, and uh, to add to that, yeah, I think I'm also gonna release it on BeatUnion.com, which is currently accepting applications for budding producers. Uh, if you are familiar or not familiar with BeatUnion.com, it's, uh, it's a company I'm affiliated with, which is great. They take zero commission for you to sell your music and offer up a deep level of transparency so artists could see who is getting credited with what where's the publishing going where did the money go when you sold your songs um which i think is great and is is the way forward for this shit uh all right so those are my pieces one when you um i'll let you kick us off into a topic sure you know uh you know what let's start off with uh the good old deal double G. Snoop Dogg. Snoop deal double G, bro. Snoop Dogg. Yo, that man's legendary. Like, you know, I was recently watching videos of uh, the roast. You know, the Charlotte Sheen roast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Donald Trump roast, and it's just it, it's entertaining when Snoop Dogg just goes up and starts talking, because this mm-hmm. dude is high as a kite, fucking just Snoop. starts saying shit. Yeah. Are you not Snoop watching? actually, he pays he pays someone I think between forty and fifty thousand dollars a year just to roll his joints. That's oh yeah, he smokes a lot of weed. He smokes a lot of fucking weed. So it's fucking you know he's Him never sober. Paris. What's that? He's never sober. Oh fuck no. How is he always driving though? He built up a certain tolerance, Juano. Yeah, clearly, but god damn. I know, it's crazy. So, that guy has okay, to clean your throat. <laughs> what, what were you saying about Snoop? Oh, uh, about how he joins uh, Death Jam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As the... What is the official title? title? I'm just... Uh, as Executive Creative and Strategic Consultant. Got it. You know, that, that's an interesting really move. not too sure what that means. <laughs> but well, you sounds know, like it, it an executive of, of A&R. It reminds me of uh, when Virgil Abloh got accepted into uh, what is it, Louis Vuitton, mm. right? And it was it was it was entertaining because at that time it was uh, what's his face, Kanye wanted to get that position, but his prodigy, yeah, yeah. the guy that he's been telling how to do fashion, is the one that ended up doing it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I I saw I saw that YouTube video, right? Yeah, yep. I saw that. Uh, that was an interesting uh, story. But Snoop Dio Double G going into the executive offices of Def Jam. It'll be interesting to see what he does. You know, Def Jam used to 
be such an iconic brand for hip hop. Yeah. On on the real, it used to be like that's where you always get the freshest shit. Rick Rubin, Russell Simmons, you know, that whole history. LL Cool J, uh, Public Enemy, on Def Jam, a whole slew of mainstay acts really built that label to you know it's stardom and of course who can forget jay-z right so yeah but you it'll know, be interesting to not see not is it interesting because you know i don't see def jam as being nearly what it used to be right it's no it's I, i'm on the same page with you, you know it, it it used to be an icon is the best way i can describe it yeah and nowadays you know seeing def jam on anything it's like wow really like you guys are still around you know i didn't fucking know they were still around till a month ago that I saw someone post about them, I was like, holy shit, they're no longer still around. Yeah. Right? I thought yeah. they were like Death Row, just went missing. Well, Death... <laughs> the, uh, the U.S. government got that shit. That went straight we'll just to the shook about it. The IRS just said, yep, we're, we're going to be taking that over. Yeah. Thank you. Shit. That shit didn't work out too well. And, <laughs> well, it's because of Shook. I mean, at the end of the day, he did also end up killing someone with no, NWA. No, yeah, there's some fucked up thing. Listen, for for Dre to leave that label, like all of his masters and his assets behind, you knew it had to be a really fucked up environment. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, we're t- it's Dr. Dre. He's been in the music game for some time by that point, and he's like, "Fuck it, I'm out of here. Keep keep all the shit. Keep all my masters. I don't give a fuck. I'm out." Yeah, yeah. No, the, you know. He must have had a gun to his head every single day, literally. Oh fuck! Man. Not imagine, not not figuratively, literally. Because Shogo was a crazy oh, motherfucker, man. right? But uh, you know, it, it's interesting. And the interesting thing here that I'm reading it says, uh, in the video announcement, uh, the news, uh, sorry, in the in a video announcement, the news, uh, Snoop says he'll be working with Def Jam, uh, and they their results. Uh, oh holy fuck! I can't fucking talk today. Basically, he said that what they'll be working on is music videos, TV shows, content, and video games, and hit records. Ah, uh, okay. So, so that that's an interesting one, because yeah. the the interesting part is not TV shows and music videos. That's that's normal, it's video right? Video games. Yeah, it's video games and content, because yeah, yeah. I don't know if okay, you ever so. seen uh GGN, uh Snoop Dogg's uh YouTube kind of podcast thing. Yeah. Right? So yeah, Snoop yeah, yeah. knows a thing or two about YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no doubt. And my question That's a good is are, for him, man. But, but here's my question. Are they gonna be going after Complex and Revolt? I you know, I I I don't know. I, I that think that they, would be uh, interesting. It, it it could be it could be a number of things where they're just saying to themselves, Listen, the future is creators are getting paid for the content. Like that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing right what now. I've been preaching, huh? Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. That's yeah. what I've been preaching to a bunch of people. Patreon kicking. You got YouTube offering, you know, memberships, which we'll talk more about later. You know, uh, I think Facebook was trying to do the same shit and offering a select group of people, um, depending on their reach. Hey, offer up some of your fans whatever five dollars a month and we'll help you mold that like yeah this shit is here so maybe you know maybe they're saying hey 360 deals aren't going to work for us nobody's making money from streaming um we got to do some shit because a lot of other artists are you know like t-pain is perfect example uh of someone who was just large you know and i still he still has influence today, but he made the right decision. Well, you know, not... the interesting thing for him is that, you know, he uploads on YouTube occasionally and, you know, he shows, you know, he makes music here or there, but he's now like, he shows like his like toy cars, like his hobby cars, like he, he likes certain things and he shows him doing music with Red Bull music and all that. But, you know, the interesting thing is now it's looking like record labels are no longer record labels. They're content media companies yeah right yeah, like you, I, I think it's i think it's all in the videos to be honest right uh, i think for sure uh, but but it's not um where where i was going is 
he he's an artist that has transi transitioned away from you know a label offering him like 900,000 for one song and him being able to realize that it it makes more sense to take 20k from Akon to have a better career because the the music the music business model uh both major label and underground electronic music it's all premised on the fundamental of keeping artists in debt yeah. you know we've got to make back our money you know that's why we can't send you any royalties you didn't hit the minimum Which, you know and all it, that it's bullshit. fucked up and it's peasant shit it really is fucking peasant shit it is they're, they're nickel and diming people that are trying to make a career like uh, you know exactly. that's, that's fucked up you know i've seen motherfuckers so now, pay me 50 bucks to go pick them up somewhere they pay me more than fucking royalties on spotify like these motherfuckers are getting nickel and dimed over something exactly. they spent hours on. When I've seen but Uber now, drivers get paid more. But now, you, you know, creators are just realize they're recognizing we're in a time where we can create a sustainable set of relationships with people, offer great content to them, which is your art, your music, whatever it is, your designs, photographs, whatever, and do it consistently and do well and you you know I, I was telling somebody i seen more in in one month than i ever did from a full year of royalties bullshit stuff i was entitled to yes. from certain labels now you got to keep it in perspective too in fairness to labels in the underground electronic music industry that it's very niche there's not a there's not a lot a of dough to go around there's but not, there's not a lot there, but fuck, man. But you still gotta make it go around. That's the reality. Well. Oh yeah. Hey man, Jesus was able to feed twelve people with a loaf of bread, saying you can't feed the right mouse. You know. There's more than twelve people. Twelve disciples. There's more than twelve people. But yeah, point your 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 point stands. One, um, like like, you know, for myself, I'm all about finding the best deal. You know. Tool yeah. room, tool room hit me up asking for music. I said, "Here are my terms. This is this is how I work." I didn't expect to hear back from them, and I'm okay with that. That's fine. That's fine. Because it's not I, for I know, everyone. I know, I know what my music does. I know how much it sells because I've now done this shit on my own, yeah. and I've seen it come from the other side. So I'm just not, you know, unless you're paying in a certain way, um, whether it's through gigs or actually paying royalties or crediting promo doing like like wake up people that that's what's happening here so yeah 100 percent jam making this move not a surprise to me interesting one for them though i like Man, i think i think it, cool. it, we just got to see what they do I, to be honest you know and, and as a closing thoughts uh, last week i had mentioned uh, the artist pontiac made ddg how he also makes vlogs and all that on youtube right yeah. And I, I think uh, the future is not no longer in hit records. I don't think it's that anymore. I think it's having decent music, but showing your personality on the internet. And I think that's where the real money is. Uh, because the reality yeah. is, you know, your music can get played the same amount as a video. But if the, the video has a sponsorship and for every thousand views, you get paid this from YouTube. And then a bonus sponsor on top of that. You're fucking laughing, right? You're, you know? There's people out there yeah. on YouTube making ten grand a video on sponsorship alone. Yeah, it's the real it's the real shit, man. Yeah. This is this is the time for for content creators, and to me, if you're an artist, if you're a DJ or producer, you're a fucking content creator. Like that's yeah, you you know you gotta embrace it, it. You gotta realize you can't just put out music and that's it. You're not you're not gonna succeed like that. You really aren't, right? If you look at most big artists, they don't even do that. They don't even just produce music, right? Especially, I've seen a lot in techno. They're starting to expand now, right? If you ever look at Carl Cox's portfolio of businesses and things he owns, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's not just music. No, bro, this guy is invested. I've heard he's invested in cologne and alcohol. He has two racing teams for some reason. He doesn't even drive cars. And like he, he has a million other investments. L look up his portfolio. And you'll just he see does. He, he does. He races cars, bro. No, he also has a, a motorcycle team. Yeah, he has. He he bikes as well. Quite a really? bit. Really? He's got like 
over 20 some odd bites. I'm telling yeah. you, Carl Cox is eating. Carl Cox is eating nice out there. Yo, that's an understatement. He's eating. He's eating nice, man. He's, he's the having, richest DJ in the world. He's having. He's having dry aged steak every other night. What it was? A, what it called? Wagon. The Japanese. Uh, <laughs> steak. And, and the thing is, he lives in Australia too, so it's not like some low tax haven. Like, no, you know, no, no, it's not like he's it, living in it Barbados. Is, it, is, it is exactly so. Hey, good for him. Shouts out to Carl Cox. Much love and respect to you, man. But yeah, that's that's the way. That's the motto: is own your content, make money off of it, invest it wisely, and diversify. And, Bring and just yeah move move forward man that's it just make sure you're diverse i love i love these motherfuckers just playing this dumbass spotify game and having no gigs to show for it like there's motherfuckers like that there's yeah there's a handful you know doing well getting some gigs and some play but after expenses your net net come okay. talk to me about how much you have yeah no, know uh, and exactly. let me know how much time you have free after that too because it's you spend so yeah. much time on all this shit, you get paid very, very little. And at the end of all that, you're still not even able to enjoy your time because you spend so much time working through this. That's not a lot. It's, it's minuscule. Anyway, it's the, it's the movement. I mean, there's still going to be some sizable labels around, good labels to work with those fucking labels. Do your thing. Give them your music. If they're paying you, Continue to work with them. That's 100%. my motto. But I'll tell you right now, if you're a label that's only sending me bullshit statements of you haven't recruited money yet and all of this other King Street sounds inflating <clears throat> expenses or you are fucking, you know, taking my music and you're reaping the benefits, cultivating and building more credibility to your platform, uh, those, those days are done. Yeah, but I'm, I'm building my own shit. You know, 100%. you know, like, fight. you need to think about this. I read, um, I read an article about the CEO of Spotify who put in a $2 billion bid to buy the Arsenal, uh, football team, soccer team. And Why? I thought to myself, how fucking ironic that this guy is so liquid that he could get two billion dollars from a, a company that is always posting losses. Yeah, I don't, they're not it, even profitable. He's doing it on the backs of people. He's doing it on the backs of people <laughs> that allow him to be something. Hey, you know, like, th this is interesting. It's, why uh, why well, continue to support well, that? That's so fucked this up. This guy, okay, he's using and he's people. And he's got a big fucking head too. Sorry, I have to say that. Big head. Uh, he's Holy using fuck. people, exploiting their labor, <laughs> forcing them to work for nothing. Remind you of anything? That's just, super <laughs> yeah, that's, remind you of anything? Welcome what to modern day slavery, time? boys. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of like that, though. But it, you know what? Like he, help, he, had, he had help in creating that motto, and it's called the major... Uh, players in the record music industry. Hey man, everyone has an the, interest. The bigger labels. You know, they own a third of Spotify. I'm not surprised. Um, so, <laughs> so that's why I always laugh at these fucking, these these guys in electronic music thinking that's the way. Yeah, man. No, it's not. Get our, get our track solid on Spotify. The, the other thing is people oh, don't wow. listen to house music in a car. That's very rare. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my god, I am on a playlist on Spotify. Oh. I have to pay only 150 bucks. Oh my god, I'm busting nuts right now. Oh my, oh my god. god, I'm about to bust. Fucking jokes. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> and I love it. I love it when people assume that I'm angry. I'm not I'm not angry, you idiot. <laughs> you think you know what? I just, you know, I just I just find it very funny and ironic. You, you know, it's entertaining. I'm the obvious question. It's and entertaining that people a lot of times think that we have enough hours in a day to be angry at shit. Yeah. You know, people think, oh, he's a hater for this, this, and this. Oh like, I didn't know I had that much time in a day. Jeez. Did you hear what he said about Spotify? 
Oh my god. <laughs> about everything, man. Oh my god, did you hear what it said? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have enough time in the day to worry yeah, about yeah, that. You, really you come don't. you come talk to me when Spotify's making bank for you. That's all I want to know. Let me know when Spotify's you show, profitable. You show me that paperwork and say, shut the fuck up, Demir. I made over, you know, 200000 or whatever on Spotify off of my underground electronic music tracks. When that happens, come talk to me. Until then, I don't want to hear about your ego tripping shit. Yeah, no. You know, you know 400,000 streams. Like, who gives a fuck, bro? So out of four, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do, let's do a quick math here. You, you know, like, who gives a fuck? Hold on. It's about... That's about twenty bucks if you're lucky. So let's see, uh, four hundred thousand times what is the pay rate? Point zero one it says. No, it's point yeah zero zero. Hold on, let's. Point see. zero zero one, a tenth of a cent. Uh, stream rate. I can tell you right now. Um. Okay. So. Anyways, it's basically anywhere between two and four dollars per one thousand streams. I haven't vetted that, but two so, and four dollars for every one thousand streams. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds nice, right? It's until you realize how much watch, that is. Well, let's watch Juan do this bad. Yeah. <laughs> Almost feel like we should have some. Some dun, fucking dun, uh, dun, intense dun. music focusing in on your face. Hold on, just, uh, hold on. Uh, Four dollars uh, is the highest. Yeah. Well, so you're getting paid sixteen hundred dollars. At tops, right? At tops of four hundred thousand streams. But that's that's sixteen hundred right at the top. We haven't even factored in. Um, expenses. So let's say you got a manager. So take let's out twenty percent for them. So that's three twenty, right? Yeah. Um, and then your distributor give them another twenty percent. So, so you're we're now at six hundred and forty dollars. So you're left with sixty percent uh, of the money. Yeah. So that equals so, to nine hundred and sixty bucks. You know, so nine sixty, and if you if you put that shit out with the label, they need to recoup. So you'll be you'll be lucky if you come out with a hundred bucks. Oh yeah, well a hundred percent because you know they needed to pay someone to do the cover art, uh, the promo. distributor, promo, uh, marketing, oh, oh I, everything. I'm saying, listen, man, you ain't seen shit. You probably. And, and that's like generous that's a generous scenario if you have what I would call a relatively decent hit in underground electronic music that's so, a, no that's a pretty big hit that's a pretty good hit, big hit yeah it's a pretty big hit I mean but there's been other cheesy electronic music songs you know oh yeah I mean if we're talking Fisher then sure man yeah 10 million why not while well, you're at it you know but, but you know but for underground electronic music yeah th those are the figures so yeah feast on that my youth let me know how suck that me goes. left nut let me know how that works out <laughs> um <laughs> let, let's move let's move along man um I do, I do want to say, you know, I'm, like, applauding people heavy today. It's a good day. It's a good day, you know. I am, I am applauding people heavy today. I, but I think we, we mentioned this in last week's pod, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself one. But shout out to uh, my homegirl, Sydney Blue, Flipside, Mark Quill, for getting uh, the distinguished underground electronic music or dance category in the Juno Awards, which is Canada's equivalent of the Grammys here. Holy, I just had deja vu, bro. I swear we actually said the exact same thing. I, I'm pretty week. sure I think, I, you know, but I'm not sure. And we talked about Sydney Blue and not hitting beer, you up again. If you saw the pre-pod, you know I was smoking. That's it's an beer. understatement, guy. Yo, so, open them eyes. Open them eyes, guys. Maybe you can look at the screen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, 
But anyway, congrats to them. But part of the reason why I mentioned it, even though if I mentioned it before, is because uh, I'm actually sitting on the committee uh, for that particular genre. And it was, it was an interesting process. It was interesting to hear how things work, how submissions work. Because I never really... I kind of like Ducinos. That's a fucking joke. You know, like, Dead Mouse is uh, electronic music. No, he's not. He's fucking commercial. Like, he wasn't that before. Well, the thing, if you're really... only doing electronic music, then yeah, technically, yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's like EDM, like that. Yeah, yeah. Cheesy, that cheesy shit. And, and they had, you know, in, and they had that in what was called the dance category, but that's always, you know, filled up with people making that cheesy shit. And it's always the same motherfuckers coming out. <laughs> same shit, different day. <laughs> Juno Award winner, blah, 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 runner-up, blah, blah, blah. Like, it, to the point where it's predictable, even up to this year. So, anyways, I'm not uh, I'm not one to just talk about shit. I like to take action. So, question. Does that mean Sydney Blue is not allowed to be a contender for the underground dance? No, no. You know what? It's funny. You should mention that. So, we can all as committee members submit stuff right but um we do have to recuse ourselves like so if i'm managing you and you put a track in i'm like i'm gonna recuse recuse myself sorry to from from any conversation or any voting on that but they're separate judges right oh okay are elected for this process and they all remain anonymous and it's totally a fair system but she, uh, you know, rightfully so. I didn't think she had to do it, but she she opted to not. She said just because she's so heavily involved, she's not going to participate, right? Yeah, so and I, and then if she wins, that's a bad luck. You really feel that way, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. And the same way I know the Oscars yeah, I, are rigged. Really, I, I'm just like, but, but to me, it's Canada, right? Like, we have 34 million people here. How many fucking, you know, how big is our underground electronic music market and then you you know whittle that down to how many artists are actually making the said music so i don't, yeah i don't know but it, politically yes it's it's it, it was it was smart of her to do that yeah and I, I i commend her for doing that so anyway yeah i had that meeting it was good i'm excited to communicate that change and be a part of the communication strategy to encourage people to submit some stuff. So it's very interesting being on the other side because I remember when I started making music and, you know, people tell me, hey, you should submit for a Juno. <laughs> and I was like, why the fuck would I do that, man? I don't see Nick Holder in there. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't see Peter and nobody. Tyrone. With Nobody Juno's there. or whatever. I see all these other cheesy guys. Like, cheese guys in there. Uh, and, and I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, but by comparison, that's what it is. If you're offended, suck my left nut. Simple as that. You love that, huh? Where, yeah. When did you... Do you remember if the you're, day... No, no, here's the thing. If you're offended, go do your own you, podcast. You to that phrase, one. I don't even know. But, uh, yeah, if you're offended, go make your own podcast and fuck off. Simple as that. <sighs> Solutions, eh? One, one's getting all gangster on us today, bro. You so, know we crap out here. You're fucking hilarious, bro, man. Honestly, <laughs> I I have one moment that I just think this fucking guy, bro. What what the fuck am I doing around this guy? I'll be pouring myself a drink and just laugh about you, bro. That's <laughs> hilarious. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Let's just continue because we're fucking a dog here. Oh, okay. Let's let's get on this thing um, because it, it actually pertains to us. So it'll be interesting. We can discuss it here because I've been meaning to talk to you about it. I've received yet another invitation uh, from YouTube, from Google, to set up a memberships only part of our channel. Well, like an OnlyFans? No, well, no membership. Like, <laughs> no. You know, we could make it that if you want. Oh, but sure, hold on. Let me get the foot out. Hold on. 
There you go, guys. No, That's we need five ninety nine. We, we need that in fishnets, bro. Ta -dum, ta -dum. <laughs> Freshly pedicured. Um, no, but this is probably the third invitation I've, we've received. And I, I read it through it, and I was like, well, why would we do that when we have Patreon? Yeah, so, I mean, that's interesting. React. So, you, you know, you I, think it, it, I think it would be nice if uh, we did a live stream here or there and just fucking said, you know be a member, be a member. Pay, pay, in, pay into that? You, yeah, just you a fucking... want to charge your YouTube subscribers to pay to get that content? Hey, man, my car is not going to get Miami Blue for free. Oh, my God. <laughs> listen, listen, but the thing is, bro, like, I and I know, and I know what you're saying about this. Like, yes, it's a revenue opportunity, but is it really? Like, YouTube is such a big pond. Like, it's a big catch-all right and i and i think a good proportion of our subscribers you know and i do recognize like we've grown the channel over 600 percent in the last year like amazing stuff right but i i do believe the majority of our subscribers are there for free game <laughs> they're they're not interested in isn't game. that why we're all on youtube <laughs> Right, exactly. But here you are, like, yo, my shit ain't gonna pay for itself. So, yeah, so I think it's a bad idea. I can look at it from I don't both think sides. It's for us, man. No, you know, honestly, I already have Patreon, and no matter how much I do joke about it and all that, I really, I don't see anything that we could do that would be like, wow, unless you know, all of a sudden you start making like some different kind of content-specific vlog. But then it's not fair to our Patreon users, which pay more. And it's just, you know, I just look at it and I say, you know, that's not, that's not fair to and, them. And, There's nothing that's a about, value add. Right. That's, that's, that's precisely it. Like, what, what distinguishable value add can we create here through YouTube that is not on Patreon? Like that, it, to me, it just, it'll just feel like we're cannibalizing. Yeah. Like the same, the same pool. I wanted to ask you, um, if we put it in you know our shoes of membership so we all you know you subscribe to different channels i yeah. do linus is one we talk about a lot yeah you mentioned quite a bit um you're a subscriber can you see yourself paying a membership to his channel no for other shit no 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 right. same here Not like, I, I, I love me some stephan graham and and my homeboy ennis on the real estate channel like but uh, they're just, I don't even pay extra. You know, unless it, here's the thing, and, and this is my personal opinion, right? Mm -hmm. For me, the only time I'll see a value proposition of giving them money is when I'm getting a physical product back. Right. Right? You know, if it's educational and all that, I do subscribe to uh, this guy. He's here in Toronto, actually. He wraps cars, right? So he has an online course. That he uploads private videos to and all that, and I learn from right. it, right? That I do right. pay into. It's like three, four bucks a month. It's nothing, right? Right. And that's something I do pay for because that's an educational thing. But in terms of entertainment, man, I'm already paying for Prime. I'm already paying for Netflix. So why, why would I go and do that, uh, right? Yeah, and you know that shit adds up, bro. It's like oh, it's brutal. It's brutal. Bucks a month. Yeah, I know. Like, God damn. You know, like the Adobe, the Adobe fees coming out. God damn, bro. The Adobe fees on another level, bro. <laughs> Never have anyone paid so much for such a broken product. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's be real. But, um, um, no, the, the reality of it is, for me, unless I'm getting a physical, maybe I'm getting, like, you know how on Patreon we offer uh, tier, the all access. I think after a couple of months, you get a, a hoodie or something, right? No, it's the VIP tier. The VIP. So after like yeah. two months, yeah. Two or three months. VIP you, tier and higher, they get. You get a, you get a shirt, yeah. Yeah. There, I see a massive value proposition, right? Totally. Where you, not only do you get the online stuff and you get all that, but you actually get a physical product, right? Something because you know nothing's worse than saying you know your money got wasted, right? But at least at the end, if you say you know at least I got a shirt or a hat or blanket, whatever, then you got something out of it. And that's the way I see it, right? The one thing I'm sort of rethinking, though, with with the fact that YouTube ha allows you to, to cast a broader net. 
and it like and you think you that it's subscribers, right? it's so integrated too. Is that's the benefit of it? But for us, you know, the, there's just you know there just isn't a value proposition where we want to say yeah you know pay us but, here. No, like you we're we can't upload be... shit like we do on Patreon. There, there, there may be, but it's still. I still see this cannibalization. Like if yeah. we, like if we did the Carlo Leo event on YouTube for five bucks, there, you know, we said, yeah, there's going to be this live stream happening behind the scenes. That there might be some uptick for that, but again, I still, I still think we'd end up just cannibalizing the the same pool so yeah yeah like i, I don't said, know. I, I don't see it as being uh something for us maybe for other channels that don't have a patreon or anything like that it makes sense and that don't upload separate files like we upload music uh videos and all that we upload a few things so right for that it makes sense for anything else it's like what's the point right like we we can't totally. sit, we have so much control on patreon and on youtube we don't right and you know that, that's the reality of it. But, yeah, that's how yeah, I see sir. it. No, I agree. I agree with you, Juan, for sure. Um, so, anyway, I, I think uh, YouTube, Facebook, they, they've they arrived to the party a little bit late to be able to do what uh, Patreon is doing. There's a yeah, I, mean, why I, I think is YouTube is five years late. And a half million. Pardon? I think YouTube is five years late. Yeah. They're, they're just late, and they're just, they're just trying to pull – from the pool. Yeah. All right. Let's. You, you want to move on from this, bro, or you, you know? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not certain if we, uh, if we completed our discussion on uh, the criteria for used panties. Like, what would, what would your menu options be? I want to uh, be explicit as long as here. it's your mom. I think it's pretty decent for me. Wow. Ah, there it is. Wow. See that's disrespect, there, guy. You don't. I never. I've never done that to you. Yeah, shut the. Your mom. You were talking about how you're gonna bang Andy's mom. That isn't your mom, though. That's Andy's <laughs> mom. That yeah. isn't, I was saying go suck your mother, but I'm gonna suck her later. Don't and, worry. And he and he brought that up. He brought that up in the first place. He said he didn't <laughs> want you to quang his mom. Yeah, he's no, no. He said it's in the group chat, bro. He's like, yo, I'm afraid you're gonna pine my mom. Yeah, and then you said, yeah, let me. You he's were afraid of. He's afraid yo, of something. You that were I willing didn't even to drop him off of. at home to see if his mom was home. What's the big deal, man? I want, but he put the idea in my mind. I yeah. didn't. I didn't put that. That forward. doesn't make it right. You know what I'm saying? It that makes doesn't... it totally right. So he's like, yo, I'm yo, just because a guy reads a book about Jeffrey Epstein doesn't mean he can go rape kids now. You're gonna find my mom. Yo, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good idea still, man. Bro, yeah. I saw this shirt and it was killing me. You know. It was uh, it says Rip Epstein, and at the bottom it says in quotations, "I committed suicide." Oh my god! And it's just There's a some... photo of Epstein there. But wait, so Mr. Juan, you're not getting away from this, so I want to oh know what god. your uh, what your used panties criteria is, and and also what would you pay? Like, I don't know. I have to check my last bill. I didn't get the invoice yet. You're, you're afraid. You're afraid. Your girl's gonna call you out. I, I don't know. I, I don't want any hair in it. I don't want any hair. If the coochies, you know, was there. I wanted to be clean shaven. You I don't know? want. I don't want. I don't want <laughs> excess hair. <laughs> hey man, if I, I want a ha- if I want a hairy undergarments, I would just sniff my own. But I do. Okay, so I do require. Uh, a very strong sense of like the pant they got to be hiked up like they got to be right stretched a little bit there. yeah they got to be right in there so the scent transfers so i'm, I'm well, going what kind of scent are you expecting minimum. guy like what fucking skittles i'm going with the three day minimum like they got to be oh they got to be sweated in and everything wet coochie and everything like i you know you got to get the I juice want, in I there the, i want the ability I want the ability to choose. Okay, this is what her lifestyle is. Uh, this is the kind of stuff she's. Well, then, bro, then you're paying a G. Let's be real. You're paying a G because that means you're controlling. You're paying everything. for a G for your used panties. Well, yeah, because you got a whole G. Well, yeah, I mean you're controlling everything she's doing. Well, no, I mean it's it's. She it's can't. A, she has to be Google on this search. diet. Search. She has to be on the. No, no, it's a Google search. Like I, I'm, I say, you know, I'm inquiring for a. 
used panties from an athletic woman uh, who is in this age range age range um, uh, preferably has worked out but that and, reminds me of you, you know when you get those high ideas like when you're high you come up with these ideas <laughs> so one of the ones we had well I had was the idea of a cummy bear okay it's a gummy I'm bear but <laughs> it's a gummy bear but a nut Okay, so the best part about it is high on fat protein, and if you want to get pregnant, it's like thirteen dollars for the bag. <laughs> <laughs> the gummy bear. Holy fuck! You lucky on crack. Yo, bro, the gummy bear is that not crazy. is that not a good oh. idea? Oh fuck, that's actually funny as fuck, man. Bro, Andy's like that's a whack idea. I'm like, bro, the gummy bear is a great idea. What are you talking about? No, no, I'm, but I'm, but I'm just, I'm just, you know, ironically, I have uh, a cummy bear. <laughs> that's a, that's Coke shit right there. Oh yeah, I know. Uh, those ones, yeah. What is that Spanish candy maker? Um, Ramo? No, it starts with an H. Isn't it an H? Oh, I don't remember. I can't remember. Anyway. Um. Great Bro, discussion. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, the cummy bear can be a multi-million dollar idea. But it'd be from multiple donors, right? Yeah, it would have to be. Well, how many nuts do you think a guy can bust in a day, bro? Can I my... usually deliver at least two tablespoons, fam. That's it? Tablespoons. No, the average is one teaspoon. Oh, you're, you're right, you're right, you're right. Two tablespoons, bro. <laughs> two day. Okay, well, I mean, if we mix it in and put a little bit of sugar in there, we can make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> Maybe uh, freeze it a little this bit. This is all disgusting. This well, it could be it could be mini gummy bears. Mm, I <laughs> make I, them not last longer. Yeah. Oh wow! There you wow. go. That's creative one. Hey man, we're, we're entrepreneur like, over I'm here. <laughs> entrepreneur. <coughs> all right, let's um, I got one more uh, topic piece to cover off. Um, I was checking out our homeboy, um, Kenny Beats. Yo, uh, one, I respect one, that you're, you're the one who put me on to him. Yeah. <coughs> really great producer, versatile producer. He started out making cheesy, corny EDM. That's not true, actually. He started off making beats for uh, Schoolboy Q. And then, right, uh, but he did make ED, corny. EDM no, he did. So he switched to that because it, it just it paid the bread. You know, it's yeah, you, yeah. you got to chase the bag, and because of corny EDM, he was able to chase the bag, get the bag, and then actually make what he wanted to make. But okay, let's let's wrap that in some context. He did that at a time when EDM was massive. Yeah, right? it was like huge. They're paying DJs half a million. You know, to play in Vegas for a night or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The real cheesy stuff, you know, Marshmallow, Dead Mouse stuff, like super, super Tiesto. No, bro, bro. Marshmallow and Alan Walker are like miles ahead of Corninas compared to like Dead Mouse. Dead Mouse okay, is a little corny. That's that's Marshmallow fair. is. Whew. That's fair. That's a, that's that's a fair point. Uh, because no, I remember Dead Mouse. I remember uh, early days on his YouTube channel. Man, he used to do some wicked fucking underground techno shit and then I don't know man don't know. oh well you know he's actually he, funny enough let's, let's jump a he, little bit off topic back. He's, he's, he's coming he's, back and he's going under the name of test pilot as his like actual underground like have you seen how underground this motherfucker is like this motherfucker will be making the sound on the fly like you'll have the EFX 1000 there making the beat and everything yeah yeah um yeah I know he's coming back with some projects he started a house label house trap We'll see what. Yeah, because we'll there's what. other labels called Mousetrap, right? Yeah, he started a label called Housetrap, I believe. Cool. I haven't seen it in my promos yet, but anyway, I don't want to <clears throat> digress too far. Yeah, so Kenny Beats um, was talking about how fucked up it is to be in the music industry today as an artist. And I would actually say if you are an artist that samples music like I do quite a bit and you're doing a remix for you know some 
big ma big major label whatever or distributor you can make major bank from it a lot of labels these big labels now they hire musicologists <laughs> to, like a gynecologist to, for music hold on hold on <laughs> I'm fucking dying already to basically help determine if a song could get cleared like if if the label should go ahead and pursue its release like things like so and on top of this he he also distinguished kenny also said yo i can have the sample cleared everything's kosher you know the artists love it um the management love it everybody loves it but you send it into the label and they give it to this fucking musicologist so the musicologist could be yeah i know the sample's cleared but you know the person that owns that publishing of the original sample might have a problem with hip hop or trap today, so they may sue us. Or the way you played this drum roll sounds very similar to Michael Jackson's Michael Jackson's Rock With You drum roll. Like crazy shit. And these people <coughs> are hired as consultants and they can make a break a release of a record. That's like, whack. Let, let that that's just sink that's just in, whack. Bro. Like yo, it is. It's fucking yo. Whack. Who the hell is this probably one of the things I'm glad we don't have as an issue in underground electronic music yet. Yet, it, it's bound to happen. Yet, ah, uh, I hope not, man. I hope not. That'd be so whack. Can you imagine that the person who says they're quote unquote a musicologist. Yeah, for all you DJs, like, imagine yeah. me coming in here and going. I know your song sounds good, and I know all the samples are clear, but you see, the person that you know that originally wrote the song was not too fond of African Americans, and for that reason, he might not like house exactly. music because they started house music. So, for that reason, we can't include it. Sorry, like oh, you see, that's retarded. Oh, the the only place I could see that being useful is if some punk ass commercial EDM guy or gal says I want to do underground shit now and you listen to no, that would be hilarious you listen to the song and you know they got a ghost producer to do it because it's like okay you tell me you're that I mean you're so amazing you can just flip your sound from that corny shit you were making the other day to this so we know it's a ghost producer blah 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 so as, as a musicologist I would say you know what I don't think the underground wants you back, bro. Uh, you uh, weren't even uh, really here to begin with because this... Steve Aoki. This, this, you know, sorry, Steve. Sorry, Steve. Uh, <laughs> go your call your sister pass, to uh, your get you back into the was scene. Revoked, was revoked. <laughs> Maybe your sister ago. can get in. Maybe your sister can get in. Yeah, we'll, we'll take your sister. We'll say, yo, what's up, man? Come here, sit on my lap, sweetie. Let me know what's good. Um... But nah, you can't. You can't get in. <laughs> no, you can't. Sorry, sweetie. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have problems if we release this record. Yeah. Oh shit. Anyway, bro. Uh, that's all I had, man. I think we covered quite a bit. Yeah. I'm gonna bounce out and play some tunage here. Get back into this, Josh. By the way. Sorry. Damn. That was like eerie. Thanks for the eerie, buddy. Uh, yeah, so shouts out to Josh Butler, shouts out to, you know, Sydney Blue, MC Flipside, Mark Quayle, all of those people for the great hard work you've been doing for the culture, pushing the culture, showing love to the culture and all of that. Shouts out to our patrons, man. You know, we got mans like Sicario, we got Amber, <coughs> Teresa. Oh, there's sorry. There is one thing I do want to and want to say. Plastic touch. What What do you got? You got something? Um, no. It was just, I believe it was um last Monday that happened. Uh, unfortunately, an artist uh passed away. Uh, rapper got kidney and a little loaded, and uh, I just want to say, you know, if you ever Ooh. little Art? loaded, he was a hip hop artist. He was uh, oh, younger than me. Uh, ended up committing suicide. Oh, that shit. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, condolences out to family and uh, friends. 
That that's a really sad. Th- and he and he did a series of posts, right? Yeah, he you know he uh, he asked God to let him into the gates of heaven and all that. He had he had posted about that. Yeah. And you know if you guys are struggling with mental health or anything like that, you know reach out to someone that you know will be there for you and will help you. Yeah, check up on your peoples, man. That's uh, amen. Really that's, that's the way to do it, you know. A, a whole life to live, a whole creative life to live, ups and downs included. That's where the, that's where success is, man. It's all in it's the in mind. It's the joys of overcoming shit and learning from it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, but I just wanted to say, uh, you know, yeah, rest in peace, little loaded. Yeah. <clears throat> you know. You know, condolences out to the family and friends. All of that. Um, so we'll end on that sad note, re- but respectful note. We get out of here. Much love and respect to the crew, posses, people, cultures. You know, get get vaccinated, man. Get ready. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do this. I'm going to get that second dose. I'm going to get All it. Right. This is a new one in the background. You might remember this one. This track, Level Up Your Soul. So we started this on a Twitch stream, and then I used it as the main track to show how we make a track, how I make a track from start to finish in a master class. Yeah, I remember this. Josh Butler dropping it, man. Hey, hey, hey. All right, let's get out of here. Much love and respect to y'all. Peace.